In just eight months, I transformed this Mustang GT into this drift car. I'm still learning. I spent a lot of time researching which parts to use with little or no modification so you don't have to. And in the video description, I'll add a link to every part that I use. So let's not waste any time and dive right in, starting with the exterior. So since this was a 2006, is a 2006 Mustang, the headlights on it were super faded, making it really hard to see at night. Plus it made the car super ugly. So I got these replacement headlights both from eBay and they're about 50 bucks. Now the fog lights, they're not Ford Mustang fog lights. They're a Jeep headlight that I had to wire in to make them work with the fog light switch. Now these specific fog uh, headlights, they no longer make them. I got them on Amazon, but any Jeep seven inch headlight will fit into the factory fog light grill. I always felt the stock bumper needed more flair. So I added this front lip from classic design concepts that I ordered from CJ Pony Parts to make it that much more aggressive. Now it was either gonna be this bumper with this lip, a GT500 front bumper, or a GT California Special front bumper. But as you guys know, all those changes are expensive and then you gotta do paint and body. So this was the fastest way to get an aggressive look without spending a bunch of cash. Now these side scoops were like a big, I have to get these side scoops, otherwise the car will never feel finished to me. Now these are from a California special Mustang, but I actually found these from a guy selling them on Facebook Marketplace. So I got them for a good deal. But I'll go ahead and link a part that I was looking at that I was gonna get in place of these scoops if I couldn't find them. Now in the back of the car, I have got the MMD Duckbill Spoiler painted in gloss black. I just think it adds a lot of aggressive styling to the car and that's pretty much it. It just looks good. Now in the taillight department, I went ahead and added the Raxium V2 smoked taillights. Again, gives it a real aggressive look. Now you might notice the car has a Shelby GT500 rear bumper. Now I also picked that up on Facebook Marketplace and you'll see this toe strap right here. That's actually mounted to the Scotty D rear bash bar and you can actually add this toe strap as an option and last but not least i got the smoked uh, fake gas cap cover in matte black so i did my best to delete all the chrome on the car when you step back you've got the black spoiler the black gas cap the smoke tail lights and the black rear diffuser and i think everything just flows together very nicely also just to clarify this is just a sticker <laughs> that i overlaid and then put in the matte black overlay now in the wheel and tire department, I went with ESR CS8s in 18 by nine and a half plus 22 offset in gloss white on all four corners. Now the fronts are wrapped in Accelera 651 Sports, 245, 4018, same in the back as well. But in the back, I'm also testing 255 and 265 Accelera Sports 651s during my drifting journey. But right now I'm rocking a square setup. So that's gonna round out everything on the exterior. Now we're gonna move on to the interior. All right, so diving right in, I did go ahead and remove the entire interior of this car. For one, it was leaking a lot of water and the carpets were completely I just destroyed. When I went to pull it to see what the awful smell was, the carpet literally fell apart. And that's in the moment where I committed that I'm just gonna gut this car and commit it to just being a full blown drift car. So one, the carpet was removed and then I removed the driver's seats, the passenger seats and the rear seats. And what I did was I put a set of status racing seats with status harnesses. Uh, these are status circuit seats. And then I used the status um, side mounts for the chairs and a plat planted technology seat bracket on both the driver and passenger side. Now I do plan on caging this car, but in the meantime, I have this harness bar here, which is either a Braum Racing or a Redline 360. I can't remember either way. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it does get the job done in the meantime. Now the dash on this car was also cracked, so I went ahead and fixed it. I used a self flocking kit to get this done and then I added some eBay carbon fiber inlays just on the center pieces. They're not the best but it looks a whole lot better than what it did. Now in the steering wheel department this is an LZ MFG leather wrap steering wheel and this is what I'm using for street driving but I am using a status suede steering wheel deep dish um, that I use when I drive. I just don't want to have to put gloves on every time I want to drive this car on the street. I do have a Hurst short throw shifter. I got this off Facebook marketplace as well. 
but I'll add a link to American Muscle where you can get the same exact shifter. It is super smooth, super buttery. You can feel every shift. I wouldn't say it's buttery, but you can feel every shift. And the throw is a lot shorter than what it would be with the stock shifter. All right, moving on to the Hydro. As you can probably tell, this says Chase Bays. So this is a Chase Bays handle that's connected to the Scotty D Hideaway mounting bracket that's all underneath this entire center console. Now the Hydro is connected to the rear dual caliper setup with the Scotty D brake line kit. Now these are connected to power stop brakes right here in the back. They're pretty similar to an OEM brake caliper and those are mounted to the Scotty D dual caliper brackets. All right, let's talk suspension because the car is lowered. So the car is sitting on a custom spec set of BC racing coilovers. Now, these are custom made for my car, the power, the modifications that I've done to it. And they were all spec'd out by Davey Peoples over at BC Racing. So in order for you to get the best set of coilovers for your drift car, I would definitely contact them. I added their contact information down below because they did make quite a few changes to these coilovers for my setup. Once you lower a straight axle Mustang, the axle is gonna shift either left or right. So I got a Scotty D panhard brace and adjustable panhard bar and got this rear axle re-centered. I kept the factory rear sway bar in the back, but I did remove the sway bar completely from the front. Now, if you wanna rock some sick negative camber like this, you're gonna to have to max out your coilovers to do so. But in order to do that, you're gonna to have to Dremel out your strut tower in order for the adjustment knob to clear just like so. Now you gotta do both sides, but now that we're underneath the hood of the car, let's talk about everything I've done to make sure this bad boy stays cool and stays on track. Now my goal with this engine was not massive power. They've got plenty of power to drift. My only concerns were in this Texas heat keeping this car cool. So I did some basic maintenance stuff. The first thing I did was throw a K&N drop-in air filter. And then I wanna go ahead and get a whole new cold air intake just didn't feel like messing with it. The key to this car was keeping it simple. Now from the intake, I went ahead and added a throttle body spacer that you can see right here. It's a billet throttle body spacer. That really just helps with throttle response without having to go in and get a tune. Now, one of the main concerns with the Ford three valve engine is timing chains. Now this engine had 221,000 miles. It still does. It's probably got like 223,000 now. So I went ahead and changed out the timing chains and cam phasers with the Ford Performance set. Now it comes with everything you need and it is a labor intensive job, but it's doable. Between chains on the car, I realized that the tabs for the coil packs were broken. So I went ahead and got new valve covers and decided to French it up a little bit and get the Ford Racing ones. In order to make sure that everything was nice and sealed, I went ahead and replaced all the intake gaskets and added a JNL oil separator on the driver's side as well as the passenger side. The things that you can't really see include a Mishimoto radiator, a Ford Performance fan, an Edelbrock water pump, and a Roush belt tensioner. Last but most certainly not least is gonna be the strut tower brace. Now I didn't buy it, my good friend Brian Pauly, AKA Falcon S197, he gifted it to me when I first got the car as a little housewarming present, if you will. Now the goal with this car was to be able to bolt on a lot of parts without having to do any heavy modification or fabrication to get this car drifting and drifting well. So everything that I listed, we're lucky enough to have companies that are making parts for S95, S197, and S550. I chose S197 because it's one of my favorite body style Mustangs, if not my absolute favorite. But so far the car is handling and driving really well. I just need to learn how to drive it better. Now the last thing, and this is really up for preference, is my livery design. I've always loved livery designs. I did it on my Challenger. I changed it up a couple times. So when it came to this car, I really wanted to make a livery. So if you want to know how to get a custom drift livery for your car, make sure to check out this video. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Until next time, peace out.